This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Next up, we've got Josh Matthews hyping up the buried alive match from inside the grave. And it appears that his head is above the grave. So of course that means there's no way it's actually six feet deep. Uh, as a background at hell in a cell, Paul bear, who was with the undertaker turned on him and that gave the victory to Kane. Two weeks later on SmackDown bear issues, one more challenge to the undertaker this time in a buried alive match. And Kane's going to beat undertaker in 16 minutes and 53 seconds to retain the world title. This is the fifth buried alive match ever. It's the first time a singles title had ever been on the line in one of these. In the prior buried alive match between the undertaker and Mr. McMahon, Kane buried the undertaker and that built to the return of the dead man and their WrestleMania 20 match undertaker at this point has lost twice in a row on pay-per-view against Kane. And unlike last time, the champion Kane comes out last. Lots of little nuanced things here. Uh, and I think this is actually their last singles match that we would see on TV. They may have done some stuff on house shows and things like that. what do you think of the match? It only gets one star in the observer. I'm sure that, uh, the crowd chanting, we want blood probably wasn't exactly something the office wanted to hear. This is as gimmick as gimmick gets a buried alive match. You saw it for the first time in 10 years. What'd you think? Well, you brought star power into it, but I think that's probably for me, the end of it. I just have never liked brother against brother. Right. Even, even if the two brothers are monsters, I didn't like the Hardys fighting each other. I didn't like the Steiners fighting each other. I don't like Kane and undertaker fighting each other. And, and again, in every, every contest, you have to have a, someone you're pulling for someone you're pulling against. I think at this point, both of them had become iconic already. Um, and it's two monsters slugging it out. You don't really have a weaker one of the two, so it's hard to get any sympathy on anybody. You know, nobody's really, if you really look at it and think about it, you never think either one is in peril or danger or, you know, uh, in a position where they may get hurt or get beat or whatever the situation is. It's just, it's hard to feel and get in somebody's corner when you got two monsters in there slugging it out. You just kind of watch, watch the massacre. And, uh, that's kind of the way the audience felt about it, I think. And it's, you know, uh, it just is not my cup of tea. Well, we at least got over Nexus. You know, this is sort of the same formula as every casket match Undertaker ever had. It looks like Undertaker's going to win. And that happens when he chokes out Kane with the go go plot. Of course, Kane's trying to tap out, but there's no submissions here. So instead, he just passes out and Undertaker slings him over in the grave. But then he spots Paul Bear, thinks this is a chance for some revenge. He throws him into the dirt. He's about to choke slam him when all of a sudden Nexus comes out and attacks him and they become too much for him. Uh, I kind of like that. You know, we're showing that Nexus is now going after the top guys, whether it's John Cena or it's the undertaker kind of a fun deal here. Um, Kane uses his magical powers to blow fire out from behind the headstone and, uh, make the front end loader dump dirt onto undertaker. And of course the announcers are pivoting from saying it's a thousand pounds of dirt to it's 2000 pounds of dirt to it's 3000 pounds of dirt. Uh, it is what it is. That was actually said on commentary. Yeah. At different points. They were, they're referenced. That's a thousand pounds. That's two thousand. My goodness. That's 3000. Yeah. Now in, well, in, in actuality, you know, we're nerds here. So we did enough research. I think it's probably two to 3000. I mean, that's probably accurate, but either way, it's a gargantuan amount of dirt and it's a gargantuan mess, but I did like the Nexus piece. I may have the answer. The thousand pounds of dirt had babies. <laughs> it was that rabbit dirt. Triplets, quadruplets. Yeah, you know, I don't mind putting any heat on uh, the Nexus. You know, I don't mind that part because it shows they're getting ballsy and they're going after the top dog. 
my question would probably be, if you're going to go there, wouldn't Undertaker at some point come back for revenge? Yeah. Probably pretty sure that never happened to my memory. So let's talk about what's going on behind the scenes in the world of wrestling before we get to the show itself. The WWE network, according to the observer was targeted for a 2011 release, but it was delayed with a new target set for January of 2012. Of course, we know it wound up actually debuting and launching on February 24th, 2014. It's pretty remarkable to think that Vince wanted to launch that three years prior to when he actually did. He certainly would have been way ahead of the curve there. What were you hearing about what the network could be or might be here in 2010? Well, when you have your own network and you're pushing only your product, I mean, my mind was, was kind of redlining. and it's like, my God, the potential there, you know, the amount of content, you know, the going back to the trivia, you know, going back to, I was picturing wrestling from the sixties and seventies and basically everything that had ever been taped by a handheld video camera or a, or a Kodak camera having snapshots, you know, I was just looking at that being unbelievable potential and uh, the amount of just sheer volume that could be put on there. And once you own your own network, for some reason in my mind, I was picturing it like us having a CBS or ABC or NBC at our disposal. Uh, wasn't quite that, but, um, network with purely wrestling and wrestling content, you know, it, it turned out to be exactly what I thought it would be. It, it, it's, it's a plethora of anything from any generation, basically that you want to see. And for, to this day, for the life of me for nine ninety nine, I can't figure out why everybody that has a TV doesn't have it. Yeah. Especially if you're even a casual wrestling fans, it, it is a, a big value. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.